In a recent survey, 96% of Sjogren's patients reported that they wished there was a systemic therapy available. Systemic therapies are those that treat the entire disease and not just one symptom. In recent years, the Sjogren's Foundation has helped to accelerate the development of these therapies through their Clinical Trials Consortium. This consortium is bringing together leading Sjogren's healthcare professionals, along with pharmaceutical companies, to determine how the foundation can best help to advance the development of a therapeutic. We asked those involved to give us an update and share with us the challenges with developing a drug for Sjogren's. I think what's important is number one, that we're actually doing clinical trials, and this has really only been since about 2010. Number two, there have been a lot of growing pains with doing clinical trials. We have to have the right criteria for what we consider Sjogren's and that sort of evolving. We also have to have the right primary endpoint or marker which would show that a drug is effective. And that's currently undergoing a lot of debate. With many questions still unanswered, Researchers are trying to find new tests and markers to monitor which therapies objectively improve which symptoms. I think that um, there's a tremendous interest right now in the Sjogren's field about uh, identifying biomarkers that can be utilized to um, identify early cases. In other words, people who would uh, be most responsive to treatment and biomarkers to help the uh, researchers distinguish between symptoms related to uh, pre-existing damage to the moisture producing glands and the other organs and active ongoing inflammation because damage probably won't respond all that well to treatment but active ongoing inflammation will. Biomarker development will not only change the way clinical trials are conducted but they will also give Sjogren's physicians more data to help treat and monitor their patients. So a biomarker is really anything that you can measure that gives you some kind of information about um, status of disease or, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are biomarkers that people are familiar with. If you go um, to your doctor and they do a blood cell count, they're measuring different types of cells in your blood and if something is abnormal, that becomes a biomarker for something. Um, if you want to measure insulin or you want to measure hemoglobin or you know, all those kinds of things that are tests, you look for some sort of difference from a normal value and then it becomes a biomarker. Biomarker development is happening at numerous institutions around the world. There have been lots of um, progress in um, biomarkers. Uh, we've been working on biomarkers also for Sjogren's. Uh, I've been working on a microbiomic marker that we've identified. We've been working on a proteomic marker that we've identified. And there's this new um, marker in the blood. With advancements being made in clinical trials, patient involvement is our next critical step. We asked Dr. Teresa Ford how she explains a clinical trial to a patient. We explain to them what the purpose is and we impress upon them, number one, that most of our immune dis disorders are, are genetically predisposed. Uh, we think genes, possibly a virus and, and some other environmental factor, maybe smoking or, or, or something, but that they need to be aware that their offspring may suffer as well. And if we don't have subjects to help us to get toward our goal, we'll never reach it. And we want to have investigators who are going to be mindful and careful of, of that observation that will watch you more closely, will monitor you with labs and visits uh, at no cost generally to the patient. And sometimes we actually um, honor the patient with some kind of reimbursement for the involvement. But the benefit that they will be giving to society in helping us to expand our scientific knowledge. By learning more, patients will realize that clinical trials are designed with the patient in mind and that their involvement will be making a difference for all Sjogren's patients. I was reticent. I didn't know that much about the process of being a patient within a clinical trial. And the, um, after, after the work that we've done, I would wholeheartedly suggest people investigate 
whether they are uh, a good candidate for any clinical trial. Today, there are nearly two dozen compounds or assets that look to be promising in Sjogren's, with over 10 companies actively engaging in clinical trial development, making this an exciting time of hope for Sjogren's patients. What excites me the most is the drug development and so many drugs on the horizon. Rather than just putting Band-Aids on symptoms, the idea of actually treating the disease is, is just so exciting. Clinical trials in Sjogren's are moving at a fast pace. Although there's still a lot of work to be done, with new endpoints to be evaluated and new biomarkers to be invented, companies continue to enter the Sjogren's arena because they know that Sjogren's patients deserve a therapy to help their suffering. To learn more about what's involved with the clinical trial or to find a clinical trial near you, please visit Sjogren's.org. Thank you for joining us on Exploring Sjogren's.